Hey guys, one question I get asked constantly in my battery review videos is how I get battery statistics and test results on this little display here that I use for testing. And I've been wanting to do a video on this for quite a while now, but um, this setup is, is highly customized. It's something I put together and wrote computer code for, for my specific use case. And it's not something that most people are going to go out and want to purchase parts for. I know I'm going to be asked to share code and whatnot as soon as I publish this video, and that's not something I'm going to do. So because of those reasons, I've been refraining from doing a video on it. Uh, but the question has come up so many times now that uh, I feel it's time to take a walkthrough and show you how I set this up, uh, how I configured it, and why I made some of the choices I did. And then if you want to do something similar, um, you're welcome to go out and build a similar setup yourself. Uh, what we do in these battery tests is we're charging up the battery to 100% state of charge. And then we want to discharge the battery down to 0% state of charge. And that tells us the amount of stored power or stored energy in that battery. Now every battery comes with a specific rating, such as a 100 amp hour battery or a 200 amp hour battery. Uh, so, so what we're testing is that the discharge capacity we see during our test matches what the manufacturer is advertising on their battery and they're being truthful and honest. Those tests are typically done with what's called a certain C rate. Now in the battery market, the fairly standard accepted test is a 0.2 C rate. So to calculate that out in terms of amps, you would take the 0.2 C rate and multiply that by the amp hour capacity of the battery. So if we have a 100 amp hour battery, a 0.2 C rate would be 20 amps. Now every battery cell will have a technical data specification sheet that tells you what the standard charge and discharge rates are that they used when they tested these batteries in the factory. So if we take a look at the data sheet for the EVE 280 amp hour batteries, we can see the standard test is a 0.5 C rate down to 2.5 volts per cell. Now I am seeing the 0.5 C discharge rate uh, more and more frequently now, specifically in the aluminum case prismatic uh, larger capacity cells than I am in the smaller cells. Um, however, I still use 0.2 C rate in my tests because it, it covers a broader area of you know, form factors and chemistries and so forth. Now, unless you buy some specialized hardware, such as an electronic load that can keep a constant current rate throughout the entire duration of the test, anything you plug into your battery is not going to be constant current. For example, I have a Best Tech 2000 watt modified sine wave inverter that I've been using. And then I plug into that this array of incandescent light bulbs. And that just allows me to thread and unthread the amount of light bulbs I need to reach a certain amount of discharge current. Now, this inverter is going to keep the output power at 120 volts AC. So what that means is as the voltage of the battery decreases, the amount of current the inverter is consuming is going to increase. Uh, so it's more like constant power rather than constant current. And the reason for that is that's the way the typical customer is going to use their battery. They'll plug in an inverter and they want to know how long their fridge runs or their lamp runs or something like that. They don't really care how long the battery is going to run at exactly 20 amps. So I feel like testing this way with close to a 0.2 C rate, but not exactly the entire duration of the test, is the way to produce the most reliable data in terms of how the user is going to use the batteries and what the technical data sheet says. So now let's get into how we actually do these tests. Uh, so this device here is a Batrium Watchmon 5 BMS. And this is the first Batrium Watchmon 5 that I had. And I chose not to follow the recommended instructions. And I ended up mixing up these two connectors, which are the balance pin inputs to the BMS. So what happened is as a result, I fried the number zero channel, which is the one most on the right. So the balance portion of this BMS does not work anymore. This BMS is essentially useless in terms of uh, actually balancing a battery. The rest of the BMS works fine. It still reads data. It still communicates with inverters. It can do everything else. It's just this, it's just this number zero channel is burned out. So I thought a good way to repurpose this is that I can use this to test batteries. And then this is the 500 amp shunt or shunt mon that Batrium sells that goes with their Watchmon products. And you can see I've labeled this B for battery and L for load. So the B side will get connected to the battery and the L side gets connected to the inverter. Uh, so the first connection that takes place is I plug this Anderson 175 amp connector. This is an SB175. And I connect this to the battery I'm going to test. We have a red for the positive and a black for the negative. Additionally, you'll see the positive has this smaller lead coming off, which is bare and exposed at the end. So I've got this Batrium shunt here on a harness, which has an SB175 input and an SB175 output. Like I said, the negative goes through the shunt. And then we have the positive here, currently going through a 100 amp mega fuse. Um, I did have an HRC fuse. It was actually, this one was wired in here for a little while. Um, and then I was testing something a little more risky and wanted something that was going to blow at a lower rate. But regardless, we then connect our battery to the battery side of our shunt. 
Now you'll notice on the right side of the shunt here we have this skinny wire coming out with a red alligator clip. This red alligator clip goes on the little pigtail piece that is sticking off of our battery positive. Okay, so what we essentially have here is a three wire shunt. So this shunt is metering the amount of current that goes through and then we have this small lead coming in that's doing nothing other than giving this a positive signal so it knows the voltage of the battery itself. So optimally this would be a four wire shunt which would mean there'd be a second wire going out to the negative um, but the way this is designed is it just is it designed as a three wire shunt where there is a negative in, negative out, and a positive in. So then our output plug or our load on the shunt will go out to the inverter and you can see there's an SB175 on the inverter. So then during the test we turn on the inverter which begins discharging the battery through this long snake of cable. So then looking at the Watchmon 5 BMS this cable connects the shunt itself to the BMS and then I plug in this USB cable for power. Uh, so it looks like this while it's operating. This Batrium has Wi-Fi. Once connected to the network, uh, it constantly transmits data across the network. Um, so at this point, we're going to switch over to the computer and I'll try to explain how that portion works. So if you work in IT or do anything IT related, you may have a better understanding of what I'm about to explain. Uh, if you don't work in IT, you may have an understanding of why I didn't exactly want to share this because I know I'm gonna get 50 million questions. The way the Batrium BMS works is it broadcasts a number of packets across the network out to the broadcast address of your local area network. Daniel from DIY Tech and Repairs, he's got a YouTube channel, uh, he's fairly well known in the DIY community. He wrote this package in uh, Node.js, it's called the Watchmon UDP Listener. So what this does is it sits on a separate server and it receives all those packets that the Batrium BMS is broadcasting out to the network. Is He designed it to work with MQTT, uh, Influx. He's also got an ISO that's pre-made for the Raspberry Pi 3. As part of this UDP listener, there's a folder in here that says Docs. Then we have the entire protocol documentation for the Batrium BMS. You can see all the data fields. There are oodles of data fields here that this Batrium BMS will share across the network. So the two that we care about are uh, number 57 and 54. So we see here is 0x5432. This is the daily session info. And if we click on that, this is where we're retrieving the amp hours and the watt hours from the shunt. If I scroll down a little bit here, we can see these fields at the bottom. We have cumulative shunt amp hour discharge and cumulative shunt watt hour discharged. This particular packet of information is broadcast every 22 seconds across the network. You can see that right here. And then down here it reports that the uh, discharged amp hours is counted at one minute intervals. So this is why sometimes during the test I say that I have to wait for the display to update because that data is only relayed back to the display every 60 seconds. It's not exactly real time. So then the other one I mentioned we care about is uh, number 57, which is right here, 0x57 or system discovery info. This is broadcast every 1.55 seconds across the network. This is where we get the uh, shunt voltage and the shunt current from. So this is the technical protocol documentation. All these other options are available if you want to do something similar. This is the code for the Watch One listener. Let's expand it a little bit. As I mentioned, it's created by Daniel of DIY Tech and Repairs. However, the version I have is heavily modified. I don't use Influx or anything like that. I don't use MQTT. I'm into more uh, relational databases. So I modify this quite heavily to use MySQL as a storage engine. So this block of code here, server on message, is where it's processing and parsing the incoming messages. I run the same code for both my, my Batrium system for my lithium iron phosphate batteries and for the test rig. So we can see I'm only logging data from system ID 2809, which is the Watchmon 5 I showed you earlier. And again, we only care about packets 54 and packets 57. We just print a debug message here, and then we call the shunt data function. And in the shunt data function, you can see we have two tables. We have one called cap test stats or capacity test stats. So on every occurrence where a 54 message ID is broadcast, we update this table with the daily kilowatt hour value discharged and the daily amp hour value discharge. So we're writing these two pieces of information every time they're broadcast for message 54. Additionally, we're making some updates on message ID 57 to the same table, cap test stats, and we save the voltage and the shunt current. Additionally, in the past two videos I've reviewed batteries, um, you'll notice I presented line graphs of the discharge test. So I also have it every time a 57 is broadcast. We're logging that record to cap test data and that's an insert, it's not an update, so we have a history of uh, voltage and amperage tests throughout the capacity test of that battery. 
Again, we're grabbing uh, the current timestamp and we're grabbing the voltage and the current from that message packet. So now we go over to the actual database in MySQL. You can see I have two tables here. I have uh, cap test stats. So I have a couple of fields, voltage, amperage, daily kilowatt hours, daily amp hours, offset kilowatt hours, and offset amp hours. So the Batrium BMS uh, does not provide a way to clear the daily session amount of amp hours and watt hours. So in order to zero out the reading, every test I run, I run this update first, where we set the offset to the current reading of the amp hours and kilowatt hours. So that essentially zeroes out the display. Then I have a separate table called cap test data, which is the incremental log of every single timestamp you can see here in the first column, what the voltage reading was and what the amperage reading was. So prior to every test, I also run this delete, which clears that table out. So we have this cap test stats data with one record that always contains the most current reading of data. So now we get to how this is actually displayed on the dashboard. So this is using an open source program called Grafana. It's free, anybody can download it, anybody can set it up. And basically what it is, is a very fast and efficient way of quickly creating graphs when you have data available in a database or some storage location. Um, you don't have to write the page and organization and all that stuff. All you're writing is the query that returns these graphs. It's a very fast and easy way to create dashboards. So I have this installed on a separate server. And here's the display you typically see on the uh, tablet. So we have the first column is shunt voltage. We have shunt current, shunt power, cumulative current, and cumulative power. So if I go into the display item for the shunt voltage, you can see it's simply selecting the current timestamp, the current voltage column, and then just the name of the data point from this cap test stats data. That's all it is. It's simply selecting those values and putting them on the screen. They're all the same. Cumulative current's the same. Cumulative power. It's selecting the daily amp hours and it's subtracting the offset. That way we make sure we're zeroed out and it's only reading what was discharged during the test. So that's how I created this dashboard and got these numbers on the display. So additionally, I've begun showing these discharge profile graphs uh, in my recent tests. You can see how I created that here in Excel. I have my columns A through D. And the way I retrieve that data is back in the MySQL database. So I've got this select query I run. And what this does is it aggregates the data down to uh, a one-tenth of a minute. So one-tenth of a minute is six seconds, and then it's grouping by that timestamp and taking the average volts, amps, and watts during that tenth of a minute time. You can see the output. So we have the zero minutes, this was the start of the test, at 0.1 minutes or six seconds in the test, 0.2 is 12 seconds in, and so forth. Um, so I then copy all of this data from this query, and I paste it into Excel here in columns A through D, which generates this nice discharge graph for me. So I have the uh, voltage comes from column B, and this is the left y-axis. I then have the current from column C, and that becomes the right y-axis. And then I have the time at the bottom here, which becomes the uh, x-axis is coming from column A. So now we get back to the tablet display. Uh, this display is nothing special. This is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A, and it was free from Verizon. They had a promotion going on when I signed up for a contract for my phone. Any tablet will work. I simply pull up a web browser and I pull up the Grafana dashboard I just showed you on the computer on the tablet and I put it into full screen mode so you don't see the dress bar and all that stuff that takes up space on the display. That was a long explanation, um, but that is how I get the data from the battery tests onto this display for use in my videos. With all the batteries I test, you may be asking, why don't I just go out and purchase an electronic load or something like that? And, you know, I just haven't found one that, that fits my specific use case. I test a variety of batteries on this channel. It could be 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt. Um, and I want one method that's going to work across all those battery types. Mostly electronic loads I find, they're good for like 55 volts. They don't go up to uh, 60, which you technically need because a 48 volt battery has a nominal voltage of, what is it, 58.2 or 58.4 when it's full charge, something like that. Additionally, the other problem I have is most of them are rated for like 10 amps or less and you know, I need 20 amps as a bare minimum for a 12 volt battery. So this is the best solution I came up with that I can do consistently across the board. I can plug in any inverter to the output of the shunt, pretty much any voltage. I don't know what the limit on that shunt is, but it's a couple hundred volts, I believe. Um, and up to 500 amps I can discharge with this test. Uh, so for the 100 amp hour batteries, it'd be very easy to take an iCharger X6. I can run the 12 volts through this as a regenerative uh, discharge into a battery bank. That would easily give me the constant current. This can easily do 20 amps constant current discharge in a reliable way to run a test result.
However, once I get up into 24 volts, this won't do it. This won't do 48 volts. If I have a 200 amp battery, well, the limit of this is 30 amps, so I can't do a 40 amp or a 0.2 C discharge. Now I could add a second one of these. Um, now I can do a 60 amp charge and then add the two numbers together, but it gets more and more complicated as I try to find a solution that accommodates multiple voltage uh, options. Uh, that was a rather lengthy explanation. I hope it made sense. I hope it answers some of the questions. Um, I will leave links to all of the items I explained in this video to the Batrium. I'll leave links to where you can get Grafana if you'd like it. I'll leave links to the uh, GitHub repository for the Watchmon listener if you want to poke around with that a little bit. If you have any other questions, suggestions, or points you want to see on this process, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.